Five years ago, if you'd have said I would be reviewing a premium wearable air purifier system in 2021, I'd probably have laughed at you, but here we are. The Razer Zephyr is what eventually became of Razer's Project Hazel, a stylish RGB equipped face mask conceived at the height of the pandemic. It's available now, or well, it was available briefly before completely selling out at the low price of $99, which actually isn't bad even if you were literally just buying this as a prop for your cyberpunk cosplay, which I suspect a lot of people are. So I'm gonna start by making clear right off the bat that there are some fairly major changes between what we have today uh, and the original concept that we saw at CES. Most notably gone is the built-in voice amplifier. The manufacturing complexities and practicality of having a bigger battery in there just didn't work out. It was too heavy, etc. But also gone is the UV sterilizing storage box, which for me is the bigger loss of the two. Instead, you're encouraged to just wipe down the face mask, uh, but not the clear plastic cover because that has an anti-fog coating on it. But what we do still have is a very stylish face mask, or I should technically say wearable air purifier, equipped with Razer Chroma RGB LED systems, both on the filter areas and inside the mask where there's a clear front panel to see the wearer's mouth. And there are two fans to keep the air circulating and clean. So let's get on with the unboxing. Inside the typically ornate Razer box, you'll find the mask itself, USB-C charging cable, three sets of filters, and a soft drawstring pouch to keep it clean when not in use. We also received a pack of replacement filters. More on those later. Now, looking at the design of the mask, RGB LEDs aside, um, it's not all that far removed from uh, sort of industry standard face masks for working with sprays, paints, and other sort of noxious environments. But this features a clear front panel with anti-fog coating, a medical grade silicon seal on this side, and two straps to hold it on the back of your head, one of which is adjustable so you can tighten it up. It weighs around 240 grams, so actually it's pretty comfortable, but it doesn't have a super secure sort of ratchet strap, so you're not gonna be jogging with it but nor is it likely to come off in normal use. However, unlike industrial masks, these two um, meshed protrusions here, which would normally be sort of replacement 3M filter blocks, do in fact house the fans uh, and some LEDs and presumably some batteries too. And here's the kicker. The filters inside here are tiny N95 rated discs, uh, as well as a longer one for the base. And they're rated to last three days though, uh, but you'll need replacements from Razer at a cost of £30 or $30 for 10 sets, or £3 each set, which works out at £1 per day. So they aren't a standardised design, though I'm sure some people will DIY some replacement filters uh, out of N95 surgical masks, or perhaps we'll see some third-party cheap replacements on Amazon in future. Still, for me it's a shame, I think, that they didn't go with a more standardised existing commonly available filter approach, which would have meant the mask is wearable for more than just uh, N95 style airborne diseases. You can get all manner of say chlorine filters or for general particulates, etc. It's also interesting that they didn't call it a face mask, instead opting for wearable air purifier. Now, I don't know if this was to skirt around some sort of legal requirement of calling it a mask, but the filters are approved as N95 grade, 99% BFE rated, and crucially they block 95% of 0.3 micron or larger airborne particles. And according to the literature, it does comply with any mask mandates that you have in the US and the UK at least. So functionally, it is a mask. The clear flump panel, which is also optionally illuminated, is a massive boon for social interactions, and particularly those who are uh, hard of hearing and really need to see your mouth moving. It's an unspoken tragedy of the pandemic that so many people have been left behind in a world of loneliness because of not being able to see people's mouths. That said, I found when it was lit up it tended to freak people out pretty badly, so you might want to just leave the LEDs off for that bit. 
As mentioned, each of these small side blocks holds a small fan with two speed settings. And at the lowest speed, they're audible to you, but not really to anyone else. Not massively so or anything. Any sort of background noise would drown them out. But on the highest speed, they certainly produce a fairly loud and annoying whine, which could be pretty annoying in a conversation or meeting type environment or on public transport. So I probably wouldn't use it at the highest level. Uh, and to be honest, I haven't needed to. The lowest speed seems fine to me. I mean, compared to a passive mask, this is definitely better. And it doesn't fog up my glasses at all when the silicon seal is properly on. Okay, let's talk about the lighting. I mentioned the internal lighting uh, for seeing speech. It's pretty muted though. There's only a couple of LEDs in there. Uh, it's not particularly bright on the inside, but you can change the color or have it cycle through colors. And as well as that, around the fans is this uh, RGB lighting. So if you wanted to light up your mouth in toxic green, you can. It's all controlled via the smartphone app. You can use static colors or you can have this built-in signature razor effect. Uh, or there's a couple of simple color cycling, two color, uh, sort of alternate breathing patterns. Really, everything you could want from a light up mask, I guess, which is not uh, a sentence I thought I'd say. I mean, it's not something I've given much thought to, so it's certainly a talking point when you're out and about though. However, they aren't going to sync up with your computer for gaming. It's not tied into that Razer Chroma side of things. I have no idea why you'd want to do that, but everything else in the Razer line does, so maybe this should, but whatever. In terms of battery life, Razer states three and a half hours with the fans on medium speed and all the LEDs on. Now that drops to three hours for full speed fans or eight hours if you just disable the fans completely. I haven't worn it for that long in one stretch. I mean, I turned off the LEDs for my long council meeting and that was about three hours and I had the fans on low but it, it didn't go through that much power at all. So actually battery life is probably understated, I'd say, and it's really pretty good. As for durability, I think there's two points of failure here. The first is these straps. Uh, they're a sort of elastic with a fabric exterior cover, which in my experience will always degrade quickly. But actually these could be replaced pretty easily. The way they attach to the mask is, is fairly easy to adjust. There are just some little clips here that they go through. So you could easily replace that. In terms of comfort, it's certainly more comfortable to wear than a standard N95 mask, which even when I pinch it right close to my nose, I still find my glasses steam up a lot. With this, I had none of that. Uh, on the other hand, my wife couldn't seem to get the fit right. And she found that her glasses did in fact steam up even with the fans on full. I think she has a bit of a flatter face, which this didn't really work with. The facial interface does, however, feel slightly too small for me. It either sits comfortably on my nose, but sort of hugs my lower lip too closely, or it sits on my chin uh, and doesn't quite cover my nose. However, as I said, I did wear it for three hours during a uh, local council meeting. So yes, it is basically comfortable for an extended period of time. I have no issues there. Uh, the best thing about it is the active fans, which I mentioned, which make it a lot easier to breathe. I also wore it out and about at the uh, grocery shopping at Tesco, albeit with the lights turned off again. However, one thing I have found is that it very much does muffle your voice, more so than a regular mask. Let me put it on to demonstrate and hope you can still hear me. Particularly in meetings, I found it hard to get my voice heard. I had to speak louder, clearer, and sort of raise my hand first to get other people's attention, otherwise I was drowned out as just noise. One-on-one -on -one where people can see your mouth is definitely easier, but in a room full of people where everyone isn't necessarily looking at you all the time, it was tricky to be heard correctly. So I think the loss of the voice amplifier or the, the pass-through feature for your voice that was originally promised uh, is actually a feature it could have really benefited from. So, should you buy the Razer Zephyr? Let me take this off so you can hear me better. <sighs> I think it's pretty clear that we'll be wearing masks for a long time yet. I know at least half the world seems to think that the pandemic is over, and here in the UK at least, mask wearing is no longer required 
in most situations. But for many of us, it has now been normalized, and that's no bad thing, of course. And a reusable one like this is certainly a better way to go about it. With the clear screen to assist those who need it and active air filtration to avoid clouding up, fogging your glasses and making it easier to breathe. Yes, there are ongoing costs of the filter, but they're actually not that bad by comparison to full N95 masks if you're properly disposing of them. Yes, $30 for a month is quite a lot, but that's with heavy daily usage. I think realistically you won't be wearing this for eight hours a day, uh, so you should be able to get away with longer for each filter set. Oh, and the fact that it doubles up as a wicked cyberpunk cosplay mask with Bluetooth controllable RGB lighting, well, you can just consider that as an added bonus. So definitely, if you want to embrace our dystopian cyberpunk future, then be the change you want to see and grab one as soon as they're in stock again. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please hit like if the video told you what you needed to know about the Razer Zephyr mask. And if not, then ask away in the comments if you have any other questions and please consider subscribing for more reviews, giveaways, technology tutorials, and more from all of us over at makeuseof.com. Until next time, I'm James Bruce. You've been watching makeuseof.com reviews. Stay safe.